This video is gonna be full of hate and I got my reasons why. And I'm gonna share them with you today. So for people that doesn't know me, I'm just a regular person, a regular YouTuber that's been a long-term user of Windows operating system uh, by the years. Starting from Windows XP to Windows Vista to Windows 7 to Windows 8, Windows 8.1 and then Windows 10 and here we are in Windows 11. But lately, I noticed something and I just don't want to keep it in my heart, but this is going over the limits, and let's be honest. So Windows XP was a really great operating system. We all used it. It was super amazing, nostalgic, beautiful, elegant, color to ever. It's just so perfect. An operating system that was made by Microsoft itself back in the early 2000s. And for something that was made by that time, it was amazing. And still to this day, I love using Windows XP on my machines. Really fun, nostalgic and cool and smooth. Performance wise, it's good. Then moving to Windows Vista. Windows Vista was okay. Uh, you know, couple pros and cons of that operating system, but it was okay. A bit of a mistake uh, because previously it was Windows Longhorn, then they abandoned that project and moved to Windows Vista and gave us the operating system that we didn't really use for a long time. And then Windows 7, which was that big bada boom bada bum magic thing that Microsoft did and gave us a beautiful, um, like, I mean it, like amazing operating system. We all loved it. We all just fall in love with it. As an operating system, it was amazing. Then moving to Windows 8, which was a mistake, then Microsoft realized, oh shit, we fucked up. So they gave Windows 8.1. People weren't happy with that. Windows 8.1. So Microsoft started thinking and thinking and thinking, worked on other projects and gave us Windows 10. And here were everything and anything. With Microsoft started breaking down to pieces. So we all know that Microsoft used to like share an operating system every once in a while. Then after the Windows 10 release, Microsoft decided to change its plan and instead of sharing a new operating system every once in a while, they share updates for Windows 10. They kept it their way. It was okay. We agreed about it, I guess. And we didn't really mind. We have Windows 10. It was okay. And at some point, we got Windows 11. And here we are in Windows 11. This in front of you is Windows 11. You probably downloaded it at some point of your life in one of your machine, uh, machines, uh, sorry. And you might like this, you might didn't. Back in the time when it was released, it was a cool thing to do. A lot of people just decided to install it, even if it didn't meet the system requirements, even if you didn't really have that good GPU or CPU that Microsoft tells you to have, but you installed it anyways using Rufus or other tools. It was really easy to bypass that thing with the Microsoft tried to stop us with and everything was okay. People started using Windows 11. We realized that it wasn't good by any means. From the looks of it, from the usability, from, 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 from a lot of stuff that were just in front of us that we didn't really like. But we didn't really have a choice. Why? Because Windows started talking back then about stopping the supports for Windows 10. So people were afraid that they're not going to be secure enough. They're going to be safe enough. So they were basically forced to switch to Windows 11. And some of them decided to play smart and switch to Linux, including me. I switched to Linux just lately on one of my machines, which is my laptop, and they daily drive it. And I'm really okay with this. I don't really have a problem. I just um, still learn in. But at the same time, why Microsoft did that? Now let's talk a little bit about Windows. So in here we got the looks. I'm going to talk, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the looks. The looks of Windows 11 is okay, all right? It's not that bad. Uh, of course, we got that beautiful blue background, something that uh, Microsoft loves to have. They love the color blue. In Windows 7, Windows 8, you could see the color blue everywhere. That doesn't mind. Colors doesn't matter. But the looks, let's start with the taskbar. Futuristic, but not cool. Compared to Windows, 7. Let's just talk about Windows 7. Cool. Do you remember how Windows 7 taskbar was just amazing and simple? And now you're with this. So the first thing is this thing over here, which is the search thingy. Imagine when you install Windows 11, it comes like that. Bloats were already in your face. You did nothing already. And there is that thing in front of you, that little bloats were in the search bar. Why Microsoft? Can you please tell me why? So you got nowhere to advertise, but on the fucking task bar, on a search bar. Please, Microsoft, why? Okay, forget about that. Let's talk about this. The star menu, what the hell is that? Just tell me what the hell is that? Yeah, I know the, the, the blur in the background, but why, even if there is like blur effects in the background, tell me how usable is that? Including the recommended thingies that's, or I don't know, 
the, the, the section that comes in here uh, and that you can't remove only if you use some external, you know, tools. Just like me, I use Explore Patcher. That's if you click in here, you can go to properties and you could see this have it installed. And without it, you cannot remove it. Why Microsoft? You could just add an option in the settings, remove the recommended section. As simple as that, a turn off and on button where we can just turn off the recommended section. It was going to be fine. Nobody was going to do anything bad with it. It's a good thing. You give more options to your customers. For somebody that's installed your operating system on his hardware and trusted you, give him the chance to change such a thing. That's why Linux is always winning when it's about customizability. Because on Windows, that's almost, or let's say it's not impossible, but almost impossible with Microsoft putting everything in front of your face and be like, here you go. This is what you're going to have and nothing more. If you want anything more, go install some malware, which are, of course, not malware, but like uh, customization tools, just like Explore Patch, for example. Move on with the, the other thingies. Uh, I will start with this, the file manager. So this is your regular file manager. Been almost the same over the years, but lately it's been, you know, adding features and removing features. Microsoft gets this really simple from Windows 7, Windows XP, Windows Vista. But this one, Windows 11, it feels a bit sluggish. Let's be honest. Even if they added that section in here, it just still, it, it's usable for sure. It's usable, but it just feels slow. Remember like using Windows 10 file manager and it was, you know, it was okay. It was smooth, quick. Like there is a, excuse me, <clears throat> a bit of uh, like sluggishness. It's, it's not smooth as you want it. It's like performance wise of a file manager. It's bad. Four out of a 10. That's why I use that one in here. One calendar, calendar, calendar. Yeah, I use that one. Uh, really smooth, really cool. I like it. You know, you can customize it and... Yeah, I believe it's open source as well. So that's that's cool. Okay, that's cool. I use it. But I'm not going to use the Windows File Manager anymore or File Explorer. What is it called? Yeah, File Explorer. One more thing. The settings. I don't like that. I don't like, I don't really like that. I, it's just not good. Not good enough, you know? Uh, even Windows 10 settings weren't good enough. We love the control panel. Like, everyone uses the control panel, right? Uh, and, the, like, Microsoft decided, like, oh, we're going to remove that soon. They probably will. And we'll be left with that ugly settings. Come on. Microsoft, no. Please, no. Don't remove the control panel. Okay, look at that. Compare this. Imagine if Microsoft didn't give us the chance to access those settings and instead just gave us a control panel, just like that. That's, by the way, they're planning to take down. They will give you an update on Windows updates where it's going to basically delete control panel. Look at that. Compare this to this. Even this one on the right looks way, you know, more simpler, but it's better to use. You go to every section, you find whatever you want. And here you just got to keep searching this, then go to that. Then, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Then this, then, oh no, what is this? I should go here, then go here. Then, oh my God, no, what am I doing? But here you just click on something and you get what you want. As simple as that. Simple and easy. Sometimes keeping stuff simple makes it more better for the user to basically understand what he's doing instead of just being lost inside the settings for five minutes or 10 minutes of his day just to change one simple setting. And of course, if you're a beginner, this is not beginner friendly. If, you, if it's your first time using Windows 11, you're going to take a lot of time to just learn how to use the settings. At some point, I will stop recommending Windows and be like, hey, you know what? Use Linux. Linux is better for you. At least it, it's very customizable. When you enter your desktop environment, you know what you're actually doing and you know the reason you're in that operating system. So moving to the next thing. Now let's talk about usability. So as a Microsoft Windows user, and I'm saying for years now, most of my life, I've been using uh, Microsoft's Windows uh, 7, XP, all of those. But Windows 11 been the most operating system that I didn't really use during the years. Really didn't use it. I was mostly uh, sticking to Windows 10 until Microsoft decided to be more serious about ending their supports for Windows 10. So then I switched. I was forced to switch. And that happened, I'm saying, only like a couple months ago, not even that while. That, that's when I switched actually to Windows 11. At first, I was just like trying it. I was like, nah, I don't really like it. So I kept Windows 10. But now I'm using it. And let me tell you that this operating system is not usable. Just this. Microsoft, can you tell me what's the 
Like, why do I have to just come here and then come here and then why? Okay, I understand. You want to, like, make it more elegant, add a bit of blur to it, uh, make this look futuristic, but usability-wise, it's bad. Like, I don't want to just come over here every single time when I'm copying something and just click on it, then, oh, this whole thing going to pop up, then I need to click this in order to find the actual thing I'm looking at. But Microsoft, can you please explain this over here? Windows 11, for some reasons, feels just so bloated and so done. Like, a lot of people give up about it and not going to use it anymore, and they switch even downgrade to Windows 10 or maybe move to Linux. You never know. Even downgrade to Windows 7. Nobody knows. Obviously, this hate for Microsoft and Windows in general. Now, let's talk about the elephants in the room. This Microsoft recall. Let's just talk about data collection that Microsoft included in its new operating systems. It's all started from Windows 10 or even in Windows 7. They decided that, you know what, we're going to just collect everything about you decided to be like hey we got that new thing that will just take screenshots of your system every single second every single millisecond will take screenshots of everything that your laptop or pc has or do and we share it we take it you know it's ours what what, what the fuck what Am I like using a operating system or am I using some hacking, whatever? It was so good. Windows XP wasn't collecting anything. It was just you know, giving you stuff here and there. Yeah. Yeah. But like, no, Microsoft wants to make more money by selling people's data or at least using it. That was like my whole opinion about this. You know, you can't tell me what's your opinion about Windows 11 in general. But for me, I think it's a horrible operating system. And Microsoft probably won't release anything better than that. And it will have the same strategy it did with uh, Microsoft's Windows 10 and keep just sharing updates here and there until at some point they surprise us with a new operating system that uh, unfortunately will need you to have an RTX 3090 as a minimum and 32 gigs of RAM, right? And uh, we'll take all your data by just basically uploading this every single moment to Microsoft services and yeah. Pretty cool, right? I don't know. That's what I believe will happen in the future. And at some point, I'll stop using Microsoft's Windows 11 and just switch completely to Linux. Like, at least that's what I think. Anyways, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And see you in the next one.